Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and yes, I didn't think I'd be back so soon, but uh, of course, the day after I buy this uh, Bridgerton candle for full price in coupon, uh, it goes on sale the next day. Normally, the like uh, early access preview stuff doesn't fall in line with a candle sale, uh, but it did this time, and they did it two for 30, uh, so you better believe I wanted to adjust uh, the candle price on that, so it was actually easier to just return and rebuy it, because I only bought one candle, so it's easier to just return it get a full refund and then rebuy two candles at the two for 30 price and call a day. And that's what I did. So I was able to get this for uh, $15 plus uh, I had another coupon. So that was cool. Uh, so I did uh, adjust this. Um, I just wanted to make sure to do it yesterday because that's technically when these candles are out like the, for the two days. Also, if you were afraid of those selling out, don't be at least my local store. I she pulled the understock. There were like two like massive drawers of understock just completely completely filled with these candles, ton of them. Uh, so don't think that this is just gonna sell out during the preview, which also makes sense because why would they have no inventory of these candles for the actual real Bridgerton launch. If this is the Hero fragrance uh, and it's the leading fragrance, of course they're going to have inventory of it. So they have it out to put on the table for the floor set for the Bridgerton stuff. So it makes sense. But you guys know how a lot of, a lot of us are like, oh my God, it's going to sell out. So I got to get it, which I kind of had that mentality too. But of course there were a ton of them. So there's that. And then since I was in the store, I was like, well, let me let me see what else they got going on. Uh, and they actually had one of the other Bridgerton candles. Uh, so we will talk about that today. Uh, I also have Dressed in White, Gingham Unstoppable, and then some other knickknacks as well that I will uh, go into. And we'll talk about that today. Uh, so yeah, um, I did smell all of the supporting or the other four Bridgerton fragrances. Uh, they were available on hand soap. And once again, I have to like kind of reserve my final judgment until I actually smell the candle itself. Because a lot of times a hand soap, because it's like liquid, there's also almost like a chemical undertone to it sometimes that you can get, you can't get a really true accurate reading on it. And yeah, I could have bought the soaps for haul purposes, but honestly, none of them were like, oh my God, stand out, especially that I needed a soap either when I still have a backlog of soaps. Not that that has ever stopped me from buying more candles, uh, but soaps I'm not quite as like gun ho about as I am with the candles. So I was like, I'll smell all the soaps and take photos of the notes and relay them on video, but I didn't need to buy any of them. But of course I did buy the one candle that was available, which was the Bridgerton Study one, which I will go into after I talk about my thoughts on the other fragrances that I did not buy. Um, okay. Let's see, Queen Charlotte's Tea. Um, it was in like a teal packaging. Uh, rich bergamot, bold citrus, and black tea leaves. Uh, that of course kind of smelled more like a, not quite of on the nose as like London Calling or Tea and Lemon or Sweet Tea and Lemonade where it's that like very uh, obvious like Lipton um, like sweet tea mix type of fragrance, you know, where it's like really sweet and juicy and you get that really like sweet tea fragrance, kind of like a McDonald's sweet tea with heaps of like a candied citrus in there. Uh, it doesn't go quite that far. But then there's also like white tea and sage, which is more of that sort of like sophisticated spa moment, like fancy tea fragrance. It kind of like lies somewhere in between the two of those where, yeah, you get like a citrus fragrance in there and there's something that kind of evokes like more of that sort of like herbal floral tea quality to it without going full blown like sweet tea. Uh, but not quite as like spa, like as white tea and sage, somewhere kind of in the middle where it's like, okay, yeah, it's a tea fragrance, but it also smells kind of like uh, luxurious or spa-like at the same time. Um, it was just all right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Once again, I've like, I smelled everything under the sun at this point. So nothing's like super groundbreaking, uh, but it, it was nice. Uh, like if you want some kind of tea and citrus fragrance that exists, but just once again, a little bit more white tea and sage than like the tea and lemon variety. Uh, we then had Danbury Shortbread, which is like almost like this sort of maroon, red, uh, pinkish uh, tone to it. The notes on that read whipped vanilla, almonds, and sugar crystals. So the hand soap kind of smells like the cherry almond shortbread that we had uh, recently, but that actually used to be an old fragrance back in the day as well. Uh, but I would say maybe take away... Uh, a little bit of the cherry that you get in cherry almond shortbread that has that weird like heavy like cherry almond sort of like duo fragrance to it. I would say maybe just tone down the cherry on that but because cherry and almond share a similar quality to it you still get a little bit of that sort of almond nutty sweetness in there uh, and then just heaps of like the sort of buttery like sh like you know like the hard sugar crystals on top of a shortbread what mixed with the butter that moment you definitely get in there. We've kind of had a lot of almond um, sort of fragrances going around. So once again, it is a little redundant. Think of kind of like Mary Cookie, but made a little less 
creamy and mayonnaise-y and a little bit more like almond crunchy buttery. Kind of kind of like that. Um, once again, I wish for something a little bit more exotic. I know we had like lemon, lemon lavender shortbread, which would have been awesome. Something like that would have been really cool where there was maybe some kind of like floral uh, hint mixed with the shortbread, like kind of like a lavender shortbread kind of moment. Uh, but that was not the case. It was more just like a sort of mass appeal, general sort of buttery with undertones of almond uh, shortbread fragrance, which it wasn't bad. And I think of the four supporting ones, I'll probably enjoy that one the most because it's just like very much like I just love Bath and Body Works bakery fragrances and they usually do them pretty like juicy and awesome. So I'll probably kind of gravitate towards that one. So that's probably the one I'm most excited for in terms of candle. Uh, but uh, thankfully it doesn't go like almond croissant. The more you burn it, the more it gets like burnt and nasty and disgusting. And like there's this, this almost like salty um, intensity to the almond and the almond paste that you get in almond croissant. It doesn't quite go that hard on that sort of like almond uh, salty action. Uh, it's a little bit more just like buttery shortbread in like the Mary Cookie kind of way, but once again, not exactly Mary Cookie, and that is what I got personally from that fragrance. Moving right along, the next one we have is Wisteria Garden, which we had a Wisteria Garden candle before, but this new Bridgerton Wisteria Garden does not appear to be that fragrance. The old Wisteria Garden, it was like one of those Mother's Day uh, like floor set candles, and I think it had like a like either a watercolor or some like paintbrush type of like wraparound label on it. And that used to be very similar to Merci Paris, which is also kind of in the same family of your Cozy Cashmere, Sunlit Cashmere, Sea Island Blossom, and there's some other like recent one that they've repackaged that one as well. Um, it did not not smell like the the previous Wisteria Garden candle. Uh, it does smell like a new fragrance. The notes on those read sweet rosewood, English rain, and lemon petals. Um, yeah, this one was very, it's a very hard read on the hand soap. I couldn't really get a great, uh, uh, read on the fragrance from the soap. Uh, but it was kind of like, you did get like sort of that sort of like bright lemony floral fragrance in there. Um, kind of in the, like, the, like, think of like Southern Magnolia that we've had before. It's an online exclusive or under the Magnolia tree. Um, like, this type of fragrance where you get that sort of bright citrus in there mixed with something sort of vaguely green and floral uh, to evoke kind of like a spring bright citrus floral fragrance is kind of what I got at least from the hand soap. Um, it didn't really smell like like something powdery or heavy like uh, rose water and ivy or like a traditional rose fragrance. Nothing really like that. Uh, and also interestingly, it didn't smell like wisteria as I've ever smelled it in other candles. So there's the Homeworks Wisteria Vine candle, which smells totally different from this hand soap. Uh, and I think the Wisteria Vine was advertised as a realistic wisteria fragrance. Uh, and it had like a juicy, almost like grapey or plummy sweetness to it. Uh, that made it like actually really like candy sweet, but still had a beautiful floral essence to it. It didn't smell anything like the Wisteria Vine uh, fragrance from Homeworks. So it didn't really actually smell like, I guess, what a wisteria is supposed to smell like um so there was that i don't know it was i guess i was expecting something i don't know it's just like if it's a english theme i just kind of wanted maybe something a little bit more like on the nose like like english garden like the powdery heavy heavy heady uh like rose rose garden fragrance but i wasn't really getting that from the hand soap but maybe maybe the candle will smell a little bit better but yeah uh, and that was that. And that finally leads us to the one candle uh, that we do have, which is the Bridgerton Study One, which, has, which ironically was the one I was least excited for. But hey, if it's available, I'll take it. So that's what that looks like. Um, this does have like an embossed lid. That's what that looks like. And it's gold. Um, these are... $29.95, just keep that in mind. So these are jacked up uh, in terms of like when you do your exchanges, it's you kind of can't because I don't think there's a $29.95 candle out on the floor currently. We have the $32.95 from the fancy glass lid and the sweet carrot cake. And we have bunches of $26.95 and then we have some of the $24.95 with just this square label on it, uh, but none at $29.95. So it's kind of like, yeah, you can't, if you're thinking about the whole even exchange thing, just keep that in mind. Uh, the bottom looks like that. Some of the other ones has the Bridgerton Netflix uh, Shondaland logo and everything on it. And yeah. Um, let's see. I like the packaging. I like that this is more very, uh, like on the nose English royalty fanciness. Uh, so I appreciate that. It's almost like this gold. Yeah, I think it's just like a gold or ir like a gold iridescent finish on the sort of like damask pattern. And there's like a crown embedded in that pattern as well. And then you have like a textured stripe. It has very much like old English wallpaper feel to it, which you guys know I absolutely love uh, with the ornate border around it. Once again, they normally don't go this ornate uh, and like antique -y. 
in their design so I love that this is the one opportunity like regardless of whatever Bridgerton is I just love that this uh, aesthetic can exist uh, at Bath and Body Works currently in 2024 um, so yeah uh, the notes on this read, smooth amber, oak wood, and dried orchids. Uh, core wicks on it and white wax, and that's what that looks like. Yeah, um, interesting. It reminds me very much of like a holiday fragrance, believe it or not. There's like this very spicy, juicy amber fragrance in there. And there's almost like a, like kind of like these sort of like mold fruits and like citrus fruity kind of like action and like mold spices like think of that there's very much like that sort of like almost like yuletide antique like traditional um that type of like feel that you get captured in fragrances like winter or like spice citrus grove you know that sort of interaction you get that sort of spicy juiciness um and like that molding spices and a little bit of that sort of like sweet fruit in there yeah it's quite spicy uh, but then there's something a little bit more woodsy and floral going on in the background that I enjoy. But I think overall it does uh, give the sort of like fever, fever, the flavor or the feel of like uh, antique study or some kind of like uh, nostalgic or I want to say yuletide. But you know like that type of like old uh, atmospheric vibe to it kind of does exist in here. It's not like full-blown cologne, but kind of think of the cologne elements you get from like flannel or classic flannel. Kind of think of that. Um, but then the dried orchids do give it this little bit of more of a feminine like powdery touch in the background that kind of balance the two out. So it's not like full-blown like friggin' uh, vintage or dark amber and oud types of like ugh, uh, cologne. Nothing like that. Uh, but also still retains a little bit of that sort of like dried orchid floral that makes it a little bit more fancy and floral at the same time and yeah it's nice it's like probably good for one and done uh nothing that i'm gonna like stockpile but very much has that kind of like a little bit of like a spicy woodsy quality to it that evokes what could be a study or a library uh and that's what that is right there um it kind of vaguely gives me the same type of like vibe or category as like black tea rose honestly i think this would have been a freaking excellent like bridgerton study fragrance i mean just look at the notes on this english tea leaves fragrant rose petals and aromatic cedar i mean if that doesn't scream like british english like royalty uh study atmospheric antique moment i don't know what does yeah i mean i smell this and this just like takes me to a very like antique atmospheric like british fancy quality to it god this would have been perfect this was golden amber and oak and i think it was also repackaged recently during one of the sas's as some rando wallflower that the name is escaping me right now but yeah oh god this would have been awesome and it even retains some of that sort of like floral rose petal quality that you associate with like royal english gardens you know Ah, oh, this would have been this would have been great as a bridgerton study but I, I, on the other hand i'm still kind of i guess thankful or grateful it's a new fragrance rather than a repackage but yeah i don't know so that was bridgerton study right there um i still definitely want to smell the other candles obviously and i'll probably pick up at least one of them uh each just for the collection purposes oh the other thing i wanted to compare it to because it's like the obvious comparison is like how does it compare to bulk loft uh and we have that here which was oh did i have the notes on this um yeah, no. I mean, similar, like, woodsy quality to it. This is so much more spicier. Um, and this one's a little bit more, like, dry and papery. Yeah, more, like, dry, papery, and powdery. Whereas this one's a little bit more, like, spicy, woodsy. Yeah, not not the same fragrance. Um, so, there was that. Um, let's see. Whew, I feel like I've been talking so much. Um, moving on. So, that concludes the Bridgerton stuff. Um, we have Dressed in White. Uh there's that. You guys know I'm always thinking about my big wedding day. Uh, I'm always planning my wedding day. I just can't wait to be a bride-to-be or a groom-to-be. Um, and, you know, dream about uh, doing a... Uh, thinking about my reception and uh, engagement shower and uh, um, whatever the whatever all the things the the brides and the grooms do, which I'm totally joking, obviously, because like I'm not that that seems so far away and unattainable and not even remotely close to what's going to happen in my life. But in the event that I was maybe a bride to be or a groom to be, whatever, and I 
wanted a fragrance that kind of like captured my big day and I would have positive associations to Bath and Body Works because they provided this beautiful fragrance for me, then I think it would be so awesome if Bath and Body Works had a wedding collection. I think that's kind of the idea behind this, which is kind of cool. If you are indeed like a huge Bath and Body Works fanatic and you are like engaged or soon to be engaged or soon to be married or whatever it is, uh, and you're like, oh my God, it'd be so cool if I had like a signature Bath and Body Works wedding fragrance. Um, and like if you're that much of a diehard Bath and Body Works fan that you wanted to associate your wedding day with with a distinct Bath & Body Works like made for wedding fragrance. I think that's kind of a cool concept, honestly. Uh, like, I don't know if I would do that, obviously. Well, A, because I'm not anywhere near getting close to being married, and B, I wouldn't be wearing dressed in white, personally. <laughs> but if that's what floated your boat, then cool. Uh, but in any case, so I think that's what the concept is, and I think it's kind of cute. Uh, so dressed in white right here. I think this is, once again, the wedding collection. And there's like a first sight, which I think is the men's equivalent of this uh, wedding uh collection. Pretty packaging, very suitable for like a wedding type of feel. Has like a sort of clear uh, translucent wrap on it with a pattern on it. And then we have the watercolor florals wrapping around and the gold lid on it. And there's like a double gold foil line going across the rim. And that's what that looks like. Uh, white wax and the core wigs. $26.95. Uh, let's see. Pear Blossom, Ivory Gardenia, and Satin Woods. Yeah. Um, it's... I just, I, I just smell so much Bath and Body Works body care these days. Uh, and this is just yet another one of them. <laughs> um, it has kind of like that sort of baby wipes, powdery floral quality to it, which I guess is coming from the ivory gardenia. So sort of a powdery white floral. Does it smell like rainforest gardenia, which is the same as white gardenia or like a true gardenia on a bush? No, it's like a body care, like baby wipes, powdery um, interpretation of that. That does kind of evoke like a white dress, I guess you could say. Um... So you get that in there. It's similar to the sort of like baby wipes white floral that you got in Flower Child. So kind of if you enjoyed that. This one's a little bit more sharp and, um, yeah, just a little bit more sharp and pungent than dressed in white, but a similar undertone in there for sure. And then it's mixed with something a little bit more warmer and creamy in the vein of like sparkling amber, sensual amber. Gives it that sort of like sort of warmth, gooiness to it. And the pear blossom in here is kind of noticeable and that's what's giving it sort of that sort of sweet fruity juiciness that's usually paired with a floral which is that very much signature like Bath and Body Works fruity floral DNA that we know. Yeah, probably one and done for me uh, but still kind of fun and I enjoy the concept and once again if you if you fit that scenario that I was uh, talking about earlier then cute. Yeah, dressed in white right there. Uh, moving on. Uh, Gingham Unstoppable. Yes. So this is also coming out sometime soon. Is this for maybe National Fragrance Week? Don't quote me on that, but I thought I saw that somewhere. I don't know. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a unisex fragrance, and I think there's the cologne mist of this, which is usually, uh, uh, indicates a unisex, um, release. And silver lid, even though this is, like, all gold and stuff. Would a gold lid look better on this? Is this gold? I don't know if I have a full-blown gold lid. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. There's the gold lid on it. it. It fits a little bit better. I guess it doesn't make too much of a difference on this candle. Um, okay. Let's see. Gingham Unstoppable. Uh, fresh and rolly, sparkling water and clean musk, $26.95. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I was going to bring out white t-shirt. Um, okay. Let me go get that. Okay. We're back. Uh, fresh and rolly, sparkling water and clean musk. Yeah. Very much like a clean... Almost laundry, but not quite. Let's see. So obviously I got white t-shirt for a reason, and that's what that looks like right here. Crisp pear, lavender cloud, and soft cedarwood. Yeah. It kind of is like if you took a white t-shirt, but like kind of removed that very obvious laundry soapy quality to it, but still very, very much in the same vibe as that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like white t-shirt, but you just tone down that like sharp soapy quality to it. That's kind of what it smells like. Yeah. Kind of just hard to describe, but that's the best way to describe it. And I just, I, I just, I don't feel like putting any more thought into it. So, Gingham Unstoppable. Yeah, uh, pleasant enough. Kind of like a clean unisex, just a very like clean body care. Almost, almost soapy, but not quite type of fragrance. Yeah, okay. And lastly, um, the one a new candle from that Mother's Day collection. Um, 
or the other remaining new one that I haven't gotten yet, which was Vanilla Cloud right here. And that's what that looks like. Uh, beautiful flowers on that and a gold lid. Uh, Airy Freesia Vanilla Cream and Van Blonde Woods, $26.95. Um, let's see. Vanilla Clouds has been a hand soap for a while. Um, and every time I smell the hand soap, it just smells like vanilla, like plastic Barbie doll hair to me. Uh, whatever the reason with the vanilla oils in their foamy hand soap liquid, uh, there's always like this sort of like plasticky, chemically, uh, like Barbie doll hair quality to it. And I think the reason I associate Barbie doll is because it's like the sweetness from the vanilla kind of evokes the... I guess the sweetness that Barbie is supposed to sell. Uh, and so the hand soap always just kind of smell like that. And I was just kind of like, I don't know. Why would anyone want to smell like vanilla plastic Barbie doll hair on their hands? But to each their own. Um, and so now we have the candle, which I'm excited for. Uh, and let's see. Yeah. Uh, still kind of has a little bit of that sort of like plastic Barbie doll quality to it. For sure. Uh, but what it really, really reminds you of is that same exact marshmallow you get from Marshmallow Fireside, but remove the Fireside smoky quality to it. If you're somehow to just isolate that marshmallow note that they use, and even that sort of like that, like almost like a plasticky texture to it. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of. It's very similar to that. Um, also similar because Ice Vanilla Woods was just kind of like this uh, lavender plus marshmallow fireside blend. Uh, we had this. And boy, yeah, similar. But this one just it goes a little bit harder on that sort of like lavender. And this one does still have a smokiness from the marshmallow fireside because it's supposed to be like a woods fragrance. So this still retains the smokiness. But because this is like a, a slightly like floral deviation of marshmallow fireside, that's why you can kind of like you know, come like compare the two. But yeah, hmm. Yeah, um, so it's not quite as, as sharp and nuanced as Ice Vanilla Woods, but still that same sort of like marshmallow base that you get in Marshmallow Fireside. It's kind of just an isolated in Vanilla Cloud and that's kind of what it smells like. I'll be interested to see how the throw is on this um, compared to like Vanilla Musk, which was Marshmallow Musk right here. This one isn't as plasticky. This is also not just that exact marshmallow fireside at all. Like, no, uh, the marshmallow note at all to me. This is so much more powdery, so much more velvety, so much more, um, has like almost like a, a, like a perfumey sophistication to it that Vanilla Cloud or Marshmallow Fireside does not have. So, I mean, once again, they're both like sort of marshmallow vanilla fragrances. So yeah, they're similar there, but not the same fragrance at all. Um, uh, at least on cold, I still, this is just so friggin' excellent. So that was that. Uh, and then we also we're speculating Daffodil Daydream because this was also a marshmallow cloud type of fragrance. Yeah, it's not this either. Ooh, oh God, I love this. It's just too bad this is so light. Yeah, I prefer this too. This is beautiful. This is very much Boardwalk Marshmallow Clouds type of fragrance to me. It's almost more of this like sort of sticky sweetness to the marshmallow with this sort of like beautiful uh, floral quality to it. It is not Daffodil Daydream. It's not the same fragrance. Yeah, this just smells so much more plasticky in comparison. Yeah, it's kind of just like that sort of plasticky marshmallow firesides like marshmallow note is just pretty much what this is. Yeah, so vanilla cloud right there. But if you like marshmallow fireside and want a non-fireside version, or if you like ice vanilla woods, similar fragrance uh, to that. And I think that's it. Oh my god, I feel like I've just been rambling my ass off. Okay, that's enough. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.